Hi everyone, our subject today is neonatal season. Introduction. Neonatal period is the most common time in one's life to get seizures. Whenever seizures are uh, observed, hypoglycemia and uh, meningitis need to be excluded or treated urgently. Incidence of neonatal seizure is inversely proportional to the birth weight with the incidence of approximately 60 per uh, 1,000 at uh, less than 1.5 kg and 3 per 1,000 at more than 2.5 kg at birth. Half of the seizures in newborns are subclinical and one-third of seizures do not have an electroencephalogram correlates. 6% of the cause, uh, causes of seizures are due to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and 20% are related to stroke. Risk factor for neonatal seizure, maternal, advancing maternal age more than 40 years, pre-existing gestational diabetes mellitus, intrapartum evidence of fetal distress, Placental abruption, cord prolapse, prolonged second stage, maternal pyrexia, chorioaminitis. Infant risk factor, low gestational age, low birth weight, post term more than 42 weeks, and male sex. Etiology of neonatal seizure, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, intracranial infection, bacterial, viral, fungal, intrauterine. Cerebral malformation, intracranial hemorrhage, these approximately 85% of all causes of neonatal seizures. Other causes, metabolic, hypoglycemia, the most common metabolic, mostly in a small baby and a baby of diabetic mother. Hypocalcemia, usually due to birth asphyxia, diabetic mother, prematurity, and digorge syndrome or lately due to consumption of high milk phosphate, hypomagnesemia, hypo or hyponatremia, bilirubin encephalopathy, a drug withdrawal, chronic maternal use of drugs, inborn error of metabolism, non-ketotic hyperglycemia, not hyperglycemia, please be careful, this is hyperglycemia, pyridoxine-dependent epilepsy, folinic acid responsive seizure, pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency, glucose transporter deficiency, biotinidinase deficiency, LIA disease, sulfate oxidase deficiency. Epilepsy syndrome, benign idiopathic neonatal convulsion, which is also called fifth day fit, benign familial neonatal seizure, benign non-familial idiopathic neonatal seizure, early infantile epileptic encephalopathy with burst suppression battle, Othora syndrome, early myoclonic encephalopathy. How to approach to neonate with Caesar after performing history and physical examination? Uh, classification according to the age of the patient. In the first 24 hour, Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, meningitis, sepsis, subdural, subarachnoid, interventricular, hemorrhage, intrauterine infection, trauma, pyridoxine dependency, drug effect, or withdrawal. In the 24-hour to 72-hour of life, differential diagnosis, meningitis, sepsis, in a premature infant, intraventricular hemorrhage, in full-term infant, infarction, venous thrombosis, cerebral dysgenesis. If the age of the baby is 72 hours to one week, differential diagnosis, as we mentioned in the previous causes, also there is inborn error of metabolism, hypocalcemia, and familial neonatal seizure. If the child from one week to four weeks of age, as we mentioned these previous causes, also herpes simplex virus. Type of seizure, apnea, pedaling, subtle, eye deviation in terms, blinking, fixed stare in preterm, repetitive mouth and tongue movement, apnea, pedaling, tonic posturing of limbs, 
tonic may be focal or generalized, tonic extension or flexion of limbs, often signal severe intracranial hemorrhage in preterm infant. Clonic may be focal or multifocal, clonic limb movement, synchronous or asynchronous, localized or often with no anatomic order to progress. Consciousness may be preserved, often signal focal cerebral injury. Myoclonic, focal, multifocal or generalized, lightening like jerks of extremities in the upper limb more than the lower limbs. Differential diagnosis of movement disorder in unit. Jitterness, rhythmic character with equal forward and backward movement can be restrained and is stimulus sensitive, no eye movement. Benign sleep myoclonus, myoclonic activity confined to sleep occur in the first few weeks of life, spontaneous resolution by two to three months, no autonomic movement or eye movement. Hyperplexia, stiff baby syndrome, triad of generalized stiffness while awake, nocturnal myoclonus and exaggerated startle reflex, responsive by mual flexion of the neck or hip, clonazepam is helpful. Non-convulsive apnea, not associated with eye movement, tachycardia is not seen. Sandifier syndrome, caused by acid reflex, intermittent paroxysmal spell of generalized stiffness and obstetonic posturing, usually occur within 30 minutes of meal. Neonatal dystonia, fixed contraction of muscle, usually in severe brain lesions or in drug overdose like metoclopramide. Investigation, clinical history and examination, blood sugar, serum calcium and magnesium, blood gas, urea and electrolytes, blood culture, cerebrospinal fluid, electroencephalogram, obtain EEG if possible, ultrasonography of the brain. Antiepileptic drugs and their doses, phenobarbital, phenytoin, midazolam, lidocaine, clonazepam, and pyridoxine. Clinical peers, the data regarding the efficacy of order antiepileptics is not very convincing, but newer drugs have hardly any. Hence, phenobarbitone remain the first choice in neonatal Caesar. Treatment for neonatal Caesar, ABC, airway breathing and circulation, auto supplementation and investigation, as we mentioned previously. Then give the baby two mil per kg of 10% dextrose. Then two mil of calcium gluconate, 10% over five minutes diluted if hypocalcemia is suspected. Start etiology specific therapy like antibiotic for sepsis or other treatment. Uh, then IV phenobarbital, 20 milligram per kg loading over 20 minutes. If it still persists, consider two more loading of phenobarbital of 10 milligram per kg with maximum dose of 40 mg per kg. If not control, consider phenytoin under cardiac monitoring. Alternatively, consider a newer anti-epileptic according to the previous table, as we mentioned. Weaning protocol for neonatal seizure. If it is transient metabolic causes, if it is yes, stop anticonvulsant immediately. If it is no, if it is not transient, is it one brief seizure? If it is yes, stop anticonvulsant and observe for 48 hours. If it is uh, difficult to control seizure, continue phenobarbital and stop other anticonvulsant. Assess neurologically examination at discharge. If it is normal, stop phenobarbital. It, uh, if it is abnormal examination, Continue phenobarbital and do a neurological exam at one month of age. If it is normal, stop phenobarbital immediately. If it is abnormal, do EEG. If it is normal, taper phenobarbital over one to two weeks. 
if it is abnormal EEG, continue phenobarbital for three months and reassess. Long term outcome of neonatal seizure. Uh, almost 20% uh, for every complication except developmental delay, uh, 55%. Early death, developmental delay, mental retardation, cerebral palsy, normal, uh, no neurological abnormality, and postnatal epilepsy. Key point preferably, all neonatal seizures should have an EEG record available to differentiate between the non epileptic phenomena and seizure. Anti epileptic may have toxic effect on the brain, hence, one should try to stop as soon as possible. Thank you for your.